the I Am Discourses by the Ascended Masters St. Germain. Discourse number 25, December 25, 1932. Christmas Day. St. Germain, Invocation. Infinite I am presence, from thy ancient sanctuary, we find thee pouring forth thyself into manifestation with conscious, intelligent expression, that thy perfection be manifest in all phases of life, and that all of earth which has been wrongly qualified by mankind be raised into that ascended state, thy eternal perfection. I bring you greetings, and especially from the retreat in Arabia, that great center of training for the use of the mighty rays. I have two surprises for you today. I say I, because we are all one. I trust that I need no introduction as I speak to you over the light and sound ray. Nada Speaks the Discourse How beautiful this day always seems to us in the consciousness conveyed to humanity, representing that birth of the Christ activity in all mankind, and to the students who have become aware of what the use of the I Am Presence means to them, in setting into motion love and intelligence to do their bidding according to their direction of that limitless power. So long, individuals have wondered how to attain the Christ consciousness. The first mighty step is in the recognition of the great I Am Presence, God dwelling in you. The second step is in the use of that I Am Presence. For when you say I Am with the understanding of what it means, you have then and there entered into the Christ consciousness. It does not mean you immediately express the fullness of that Christ consciousness, for you must first know where you are going and what you wish to do before you can accomplish it. All the ascended ones have gone the same path and use identically the same application, because all roads lead to the great central sun, the Godhead. Our beloved brother Jesus performed one of the greatest blessings to mankind in not only setting the example from his birth and achieving the ascension, but in making the eternal record that stands radiant, pouring itself to humanity. Little can the unascended realize what this means to mankind. It is an eternal beacon beckoning them on into the light. And in the example of the ascension, Jesus stated definitely not only what could be done, but what must eventually be done. Great as were the wonders he was able to perform, he gave the marvelous promise that even greater things than these shall ye do. Many times students wonder what greater things could be performed than Jesus did, but he tells us that he only performed a few of the universal services which can be rendered to our fellow men. To us, this day always symbolizes the conscious beginning of that most marvelous of all achievements, the ascension. The moment the individual becomes conscious of this fact, the process of his own ascension has started, and according to the fullness of his grasp of this truth, may the individual accomplish it quickly, or require time to do it. My personal experience has been that when I became aware of what it meant and began the use of the I Am Presence, I found that shortly I was entirely unaware of time or place, and that each day as I entered more fully into this expansion of consciousness, I found that all things of my desire were right within reach. Mark you, right within my individual governing power. 
and with it came the consciousness that divine love was the mighty cohesive power holding all things together and in place, that this divine love within me of which I had begun to learn made me an invincible magnet for everything upon which my desire rested. This simple truth is one of the mightiest that first comes to the student. At first, it causes one to realize that really he can rise above these seeming limitations about him, and then he finds, one by one, that he is actually doing it. Then comes the great inrush and outpouring of this mighty self within, which holds the substance of everything the heart can wish within its own embrace. And your ability and authority mark you to qualify and mold this substance is that which causes it to take on the form of your requirement, whether it be peace, love, gold, or enlightenment. I say to the beloved students, Awake, O beloved students, to your authority, to your right, to your conscious ability to apply this great law, to your perfect health, eternal youth and beauty, the riches of God, the glorifying of your mind and body, and then to ascend into the arisen dominion, into your eternal everlasting freedom. After you begin to find step by step that you are accomplishing, then you begin to forget all this outer condition surging about you in the glorious feeling of being held in the great embrace of that mighty master self within, which never has and never will give cognizance to time or space. You are the master and have dominion in your life and over your world the moment you recognize that the energy, power, and intelligence which you are using is the mighty I am presence. How fortunate indeed are those individualizations upon earth who become aware, really aware, of this truth. Jesus said, Know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is one of the mightiest phases of that truth. Apply it, O oh beloved ones, with full determination, shutting out all uncertainty from your minds, and you will climb steadily that jeweled ladder of achievement. And as you look back upon each step gained, more and more will that blazing radiance shine forth, and you will wonder, how could I have gone so long in the shadow, when above me stood this mighty flame of life, ready to consume instantly all my unfortunate, ignorant creation. I tell you, beloved ones, that you do not have to wait indefinitely in the recognition of this mighty presence. Fold your arms about it in all the adoration you can command, and it will raise you quickly out of all these seeming limitations, clothing you in that seamless crystal garment, blazing with radiant light and held with a jeweled girdle that it is your right to wear, and in your hand that blazing scepter of dominion, the searchlight of your mighty soul, which you can turn upon anything, upon any place, upon any height, and draw to you the revelations from within it. Such, beloved brothers and sisters, is the picture of achievement which we have used and attained. Such we know you can do, because we have. Never grow weary of the consciousness that I am the ascended presence. And when you say that, know it is the self-sustaining, emanating strength by which I reach my full dominion. It makes me very happy to be home again. For the happiness in your hearts, to see the many rungs of the ladder you are past, and that you have the conscious consciousness that you can achieve the greatest of God's gifts, 
the fullness of himself. Sha'ara It is with much joy that I too may say a few words over the light and sound ray to you and to answer in person the many calls of the hearts to Sha'ara. I do have many a good laugh in moving about among the students who have so much longing that I make myself visible to them. And yet, some of them, upon the slightest movement unusual, catching their breaths, lest I do. You know it is most comical. The outer activity of the self wants a thing so much, and at the same time experiences all kinds of prickly sensations about it. But, beloved ones, I say this. I may not appear nearly so frightful as you might think. So trust me, at least to have a pleasing form or appearance, and at the same time for the benefit of the dear sisters, I shall endeavor to bring along some attar of roses. Question. From Kashmir? Answer. That would be quite appropriate. Question. Why not your own brand? Answer. You are very alert. I do not need to purchase it as you do, for I am privileged to brew my own. May I add a word to the beloved students, commending them and urging them to continue that wonderful, glorious presence of love and goodwill, not only to us, but to each other, because it makes a wonderful condition in which the expansion of consciousness goes on in leaps and bounds. I must commend them on the feeling of certainty within themselves in the accepting of our presence and the consciousness of their ability to apply the law of their I am presence, for it is increasing with great speed. Do not be discouraged in your call for our visible appearance. While our hearing is perfectly good, I assure you, yet in that call is something that you require. In the call for a thing is a certain vibratory action that the student needs, which cannot be explained except as you see it from the inner action. America. Oh, America, precious jewel in the crown, the diadem of earth, that flower of ancient wisdom and light, Again you shall come into the power of your full bloom, in spite of all the seeming obstructions and appearances to the contrary at present. Within thy soul, O mighty America, is the strength to shake thyself free from the barnacles that have attached themselves to thee, the barnacles of selfishness, and the creation of the outer activity of the mind of unawakened human beings. So shall you again come into the fullness of that light which is your birthright. Beloved students of this radiation, no matter what the appearance seems to be in the outer activity, do not allow that appearance to find anchorage in your consciousness or the suggestions from others concerning America. Stand serene in your God-given dominion, knowing the truth, seeing America free, governed by divine love and justice. The net that the sinister force of earth has seemed to draw America into will yet find the sword of truth and light, sever the net each way, making of it the open-ended cross of freedom, of light, and justice. The most valuable thing in the individual's life in the things which he cannot help is to shut his eyes to the appearance of them, acknowledge and set forth into action the mighty power of the I Am Presence. Do you not see, beloved students, how very, very foolish it is to keep accepting the appearance through suggestion or otherwise, which you do not want, whether it is national, state, or personal, 
when you have such an extraordinary privilege of setting into activity the mighty I am presence to correct whatever has the appearance of less than perfection. The habit of mankind has been to see imperfection where we see perfection. Now, in the recognition of the mighty I am presence, fully accept its perfection every hour of the day. This does not mean that you have to dwell on this by the hour, but you can at least assert once every hour of the waking state, I do accept the full activity of my mighty I am presence. Each time you assert this, you are building its perfection more powerfully into your outer activity, for you are already using this energy, and why not acknowledge at all times who and what it is you are using, thus giving it the dominion it wishes to convey to you. In this way, you can set into motion for the freedom, protection, and blessing of America, your beloved country, an invincible power. You do as yet little dream of the mighty potency and power of adjustment it can cause to take place when consciously set into motion by one or more who recognize its invincible universal power. Now let me suggest that instead of listening to the constant lamentation and suggestion of all kinds of destructive activities, that you know the I am presence consumes them and requalifies this energy with freedom, protection, and perfection for America and the world. For your encouragement, I want to say that all those human beings who started the cause of this present condition did not foresee that it was going beyond their control, and through it, many of them have lost their outer ability to longer foster it. So will those who are attempting to bring back prosperity by the unlimited use of beer find things going beyond their control, and instead of temporary prosperity, things will sweep into actual prosperity. So now, as at all times of seeming chaos, will come peace on earth, goodwill to men, and the light of the expanding Christ in the hearts of individuals permeating the earth will draw to itself its own. Again, for the benefit of the beloved students, I urge them not to discuss discordant things any more than is enough to understand a situation. Then turn completely from it and never let it hold your attention again. For I assure you, what you entertain in your consciousness will find expression in your life and world. So fill it with the great I am presence, holding in its embrace the mighty fulfillment of your every desire. See that perfection that full perfection of its activity everywhere in your life and world. Do not be affected or disturbed by the creation of others where you cannot help. Accept to see perfection, knowing that back of the seeming shadow is the blazing white light of the I Am Presence. This, beloved ones, is my greeting of the season I leave with you. In closing, my mother and others of the Ascended Host, some of whom you do not know, but who know you, send their greetings of love, peace, opulence, and strength to each of you to bless you on your way to your final victory and achievement. Saint Germain Well, very fortunately, the radio corporation can't charge us up for overtime on our station. I suppose if they knew it, they would want to charge us. I want to say a word or two in conclusion, and it is to urge the students to recognize that when they say, I am, for whatever they want to be accomplished, they not only set the great I am presence into action for the accomplishment, but they should be deeply aware 
that it holds within it the self-expanding, self-sustaining, self-emanating power. While repetition is good and is oft times required to produce a deeper conviction, yet in the present advancement of the students, they should become more conscious of its innate, inherent, self-sustaining power. This would give the outer consciousness a fuller comprehension of the sustaining power, so that if the outer activity of the mind is occupied with other duties, it can send forth the charge of the I am into any achievement once an hour without in any way interfering with the student's work. It is such a mistake for the student to let register in his mind the absurd idea that he hasn't time for these things, when it only takes a moment to powerfully realize the mighty, invincible activity of his I Am presence in whatever his attention is required to be used. However, this application might be very helpful. I Am the Mighty Presence, commanding the time, all the time I require, for the realization and application of this mighty truth. On the other hand, if many times during the day one will for a few moments take the consciousness that I am the only intelligence and presence acting, it will naturally adjust things according to the requirement. It is so easy to set the consciousness into motion, knowing one is not restricted by any sense of limitation. Temples of Light They are located in the etheric belt above the Earth's atmosphere. The radiation is poured out from this belt to the Earth through its atmosphere. The etheric belt around the Earth and that around Venus would be vastly different. Venus is within the etheric belt of the sun, while the earth is below that. Warning. Do not give recognition to anyone who is a tool for the sinister force. Simply know one thing only. There is only the I am presence, intelligence, light, and power acting. Do not be concerned about any personal activity of any kind whatsoever at any time. The student's business is to see perfection, feel it, and be it, no matter what any human appearance seems to be. Benediction From out the heart of thy great silence, O oh, mighty I am presence, comes the solution of all things, the perfection of all things. For thou art the only governing power, perfection and intelligence in all outer experience. For thou art the presence governing all human expression. Only as we see thy perfect manifestation in all things do we cause perfection to manifest in all things.